Good day, friends, and welcome back to what we are lovingly calling the Jack and Daxter playthrough. Well, us and everyone else, I guess. Today, we're heading over to Misty Island. Now, now, Daxter, don't go shaking in your non-existent boots right now. We've got to collect power cells and power orbs and power things. I think I've lost track of what these things are called, Jeff. And they're all the same. They're big, round objects of precursor nature. Okay, fair enough. So what can we expect over here, apart from the difficulty rising due to the amount of lurkers bopping about? Uh, we can expect to see a new enemy type. Ooh. We get to see a vehicle. Ooh. We also get to see a new eco type, actually. Oh man, this part has everything. It's even got giant bones. <laughs> if I wasn't a subscriber to HFC, I sure as shit would be by the end of this part. Make sure to subscribe and like. <laughs> oh, please don't. No, we, no, we don't espouse that kind of thing here at HFC. You've got a lot to learn, my young commentator. Teach me. <laughs> no, pay me first. I've, I've been watching far too much Two Best Friends play recently. I've noticed you can never watch too much. I've been noticing their memeology, like, kind of soaking into my vernacular, my vocabulary. So, yeah, there's the muse we have to catch. Now, normally, I could get it instantly by doing a rolling jump into it, but I couldn't get it this time, so it's going to take a little while to catch up to him. Okay, fair enough. I noticed in the uh, Summer Games Done Quick Speed run, they got it right away. Why aren't you at that level, person who does video game commentaries for fun? <laughs> Just got to line up my jump. Is that something in there? Did you just kill something without meaning to? Yeah, there's a lurker in there that pops his head up and spits fireballs at you. Nice. Yeah, get in the bag. Mission accomplished. <laughs> so if we take that back to the artist, he'll give us another power cell. Yep. Good stuff. I kind of like the music in this level. It's very kind of tense and stealthy sounding. While still sounding a little bit ambient, yeah. That's the thing about this game's music in general. It's very chill, you know? There's not too many upbeat, you know, loud, energetic tricks. This is a very relaxed... It's a little too relaxed, actually. Yeah, I'm falling asleep here. Oh, God, chaff. Like, feel the rest of the commentary. Uh. Uh. Filler! Activate! It's okay, I'm back. I am the king of filler. It's funny you talk about, like, ambient, like, sort of, well, I said ambient, but it's funny you talk about music in general. Because, uh, flash forward to Jack 2, and, uh, you know, every time you piss off the local law enforcement, it's like, dun 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 I love that song. So, yeah, this is the A-Grav Zoomer. This is actually the thing you saw in Kira's, uh, little car mechanic shop room thingy. It's a flying... It's just a hover vehicle, basically. Yeah, it's a bike with a propeller on the front, let's be honest. It's a tiny water plane. What are these guys even doing, like, flying about? They don't seem to be, like, providing any kind of help to the rest of the structures around here. I'd imagine they're probably going to use those bombers to attack the village or something like that, and we're just trying to clear them out. Because they can go up pretty high, but they tend to stay low, so okay. that's when you got to hit them. Is it possible to take out all these guys, uh, like, while you're on the bike? Yes, that's, you have to do it with the bike, hmm. actually. Well, you say that, but I saw a certain speedrun where the guy oh, got off the oh, bike. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, well... <laughs> I hope you realize the madness that you've, like, <laughs> unlocked within yourself by agreeing to be on this playthrough. It's gonna be nothing but comparisons to better speedrunners. Well, see, I'm not even a speedrunner, so I'm not even in the same category. I'm the best at being chaff. Okay. And what is chaff? We haven't talked about strictly who you are and what you're all about, so give us a bit of a taste of Chaff X Grenade. I am a PlayStation fanboy. That's all you need to know. <laughs> no, we knew that, but <laughs> anything else? Uh, that's about it. You know, I've been following HFC stuff since, like, the Sonic 06 playthrough. Oh, sure. Yeah. Old school fan. Let's get moving. And, uh... Yeah, that's about it. I just love 
PlayStation stuff. I love platforming. I, like, I even love like Super Mario 64. I used to have that on my DS uh, back in the day. Okay. And that's probably one of my favorite games ever. I was about to like question, like, didn't you not have an N64? But yeah, the DS one. I like the DS one. They also ran that Summer Games on Quick, which I think was a change of pace because they usually run 64. I think there was like a 64 race at the end of the marathon. Sorry, I'm in the like post like Summer Games on Quick kind of funk right now because I actually started getting into it again. Uh, this year, 2006 if you're watching this in 2017, um, 2016 if you're watching this next year rather. And um, yeah, there were a lot of good runs like Pepsi Man, Sonic Adventure 2, Link's Awakening DX, it was a really fun time. Yeah, I missed most of those, but I've heard they were they were pretty good, especially Pepsi Man. I did see that one. <laughs> there was a guy in a Pepsi Man getup, a full Pepsi Man getup on the couch. So uh, this lurker here, he'll come to the edge, but he won't come down. Honestly, that's just natural selection. At that point, he deserved to be spin attacked. Nice. So we're almost getting close to the cannon that Samos mentioned, but first we had to dodge some bouncy uh, bomb thingies. Oh yeah, this is crash as fuck, mate. I'm gonna guess if you spin attack the yellow boxes, they explode. Yeah, those boxes contain concentrated dark eco. They somehow managed to put them in boxes. Yeah. I wouldn't touch them. In fact, don't even touch them because they'll break on contact. Really? Wow. Yeah. They don't mess around. Kind of like the nitro boxes in Crash then. Basically, except they don't make bubbly noises and jump around. <laughs> that's kind of creepy. That's the thing I forgot to ask you last time. What's your favorite Crash Bandicoot game? I'm kind of tied between 2 and Warts. I like 2 because of that sort of insomniacish, dickish level design that has some very weird secret areas. Mm. And the, the controls are actually a little bit tighter because, like, when you jump in the air and you start moving, you lose all your momentum, and that makes it really easy for uh, precision platforming. And you need it for that game, mm. especially. With Warped, uh, it had a lot more variety in level design, more vehicles, and kind of mini game style stuff. And it had really good boss fights. It was just overall a good, fun time all around. I imagine uh, when they do the remasters, so to speak, uh, they'll like maybe tighten up Crash One a little bit because uh, the, the 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 saving in that game is not great. I still never understood how it worked because I rented it back in the day as a kid, and I'm like, how do I save? You have to save it like at the end of a level, or you have to use a password, or some weird archaic saving utility thing. Oh, actually saving. What I was talking about was, say like you got half of the level's boxes, and you hit it- Oh yeah, oh yeah, the boxes. Oh yeah, the, that's weird. Like when you die, I think you like you lose all the boxes, right? Yeah, so even if you've hit that checkpoint, you'll still have zero boxes collected when you get back, which is really a pain, especially in the later levels when you're trying to go for the box gem. So, uh, you saw earlier, we have a new eco type called Red Eco. It makes your attack stronger, and if you do the jumping attack, the ground pound, it makes a shockwave that hits everything in the area. Nice. I will look up the actual definition for this shoe. Not that I don't believe you, I just like being anal retentive and proper. Fair enough. Okay. It is the eco of short range power and strength. Nice. It could also be the eco of short-tempered and angeredness. Look how red and angry it is. Just, ah, it makes you powerful. Oh, nowhere near as angry as Jack in the second game. Well, that's more edgy, but <laughs> yeah, it's also anger. Man, I know a lot of people love that game, but it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I know, like, the gaming break, for example, he loves that game. <laughs> It's, uh, well, we'll get to Jack 2 when we get to Jack 2, but yeah, that Pro was... <laughs> Probably never, because I don't want to play it. Well, fine, I'll play it for you, then. I'll show you! Coming soon to Chaff X Grenade's playthroughs channel. Can you sink, like, all the way in these mud pits? Uh, no, you just kind of just sit there. Okay. If I recall correctly, to get one of the power-ups around here, you have to charge up with Blue Eco, and then run as fast as possible, jumping over gaps and whatnot. Yep, there is a platform in the distance that has a power cell, and you have to activate a, a Blue Eco-powered platform to get to it, and we gotta do a little running around to get enough Blue Eco to charge it. Okay. So, first things first, we gotta clear out the area so we don't mess up on the way. I imagine if you were like, you know, again, speedrunners here, you could just run around these guys, but... Uh, 
Yeah, you know, when you're just recording playthroughs and such, you want to make your path through the levels as easy and carefree as possible. Yeah, here at HFC, we're not about speed, we're about things that aren't. <laughs> the opposite of speed, not speed. Very close to another uh, power orb or cell right there with the flies and whatnot. Yep, just got one more to go, and there's one area of this level that I haven't seen just yet. I remember this area being so much bigger when I first played it, but maybe it's just because I hadn't like seen the whole thing, and I was much younger at the time. I actually, I actually forget the uh, first time I played Jack and Daxter because it definitely wasn't when it originally came out. Yeah, I kind of had that same feeling about this game and about stuff like Spyro, where as a kid, you know. It was your first time seeing these huge, you know, open levels where you could run around and explore them. But then when you look back on them as an adult, they're not as big as, as you remember, but you still appreciate that they could make something this big at, you know, at that time with the current technology. So is that it? Are we done with this place for now? Nope. We still have one more area to go through. Okay, don't. Do you ever abuse, like, Jack's bouncing to be able to jump higher? Is bouncing? Yeah, you can do like a, a slam attack on the ground and then use the momentum. Oh, right, from that, yeah, if you up, do yeah. a yeah, you can do like a ground pound and then press X as soon as you hit the ground to get a little uh, a weird high jump. Sometimes I do that, but I normally do the uh, double jump and then spin to get that extra height. Okay, because um, when we were back in uh, the Forbidden Jungle or whatever it's called, uh, when we're going up the tower, I know you can bounce on those platforms to uh, get hi like higher before the platform's rotation is finished. I'm not sure what those catapults are for. I think they're actually seesaws that the lurkers use for fun. Mm -hmm. There we go. Ah! Nice. So yeah, just gotta get a few more precursor orbs, and then we'll, we'll be done with this level. Mm -hmm. Not a bad one. Overall, of course, it'll get more complex as we go through the game as per platformer lore. So, you know, now it's not so scary, even though Dexter has been turned into this tiny animal, it's not so bad. I'm surprised they, like, even gave uh, Misty Island, like, a day-night cycle. Uh, I mean, you know, it would be out of sync with uh, the rest of the game if it didn't, but you think an island perpetually draped in night would uh, make for a very intimidating sort of area. It does sort of look a lot more, you know, intense at night, where it's just, you know, you're sneaking onto this dangerous secret island populated by lurkers and everything. Yeah. And then in the daytime, it's like, oh, hey, it's just an island. It's daytime. It's all right. Nicely done, Mo. I will mention one thing that bugs me. Um, I'm not sure if it's, like, for, like, each area or whatnot. Maybe I'm even thinking of a different platforming series, but I'll just say this now. When you go into, like, a level, you'll collect, say... We'll go back to Banjo, for example, like notes, and it will say like, uh, say there's a hundred notes in a level, it'll be like one to a hundred, and when you hit a hundred it won't go over that, if you collect anything in another level, it will just go back to zero, and it will show you only what you have for that level. It may have, it may have been Tui that did this, but it shows your collection for the whole game, and you have to go into like the menu to see what you've got specifically for that level. Oh, that's the worst. Like, Spyro 2 did that too, and that still annoys me. Yep, yeah. Because the first game, whatever level you were in, it would only show your gym count for that level. And then in 2, it would just show your overall gym count. And it was harder for that game because since that one had power-ups that you needed to get to certain areas, you didn't always know if you had, you know, all the gems for that level. Yeah. So you're kind of kind of guessing, like, do I have all the gems or do I need to get a new power to get to this area? You know, it's kind of... They, it's a minor thing, but it's actually a lot more annoying if you think about it. Granted, you could check, like, your uh, your guide and whatnot, and uh, obviously you were prompted when you got them all, but uh, it's just that little nitpick. As for me, I personally go in for, uh, just tell me how much I've got in, like, a single level. Obviously, it's harder to do for, like, open world stuff, because you've got to pass boundaries, but uh, eh, I'm just nitpicking at this point. No, it's fun to nitpick. It's fun to nitpick, because, you know, these games, they're fun, but they're not perfect. Like, even my favorite game of all time, like, Ape Escape, isn't perfect. Because there's still things that they could improve on, things that could have changed. 
It's fun to look back on stuff like this. Would you be willing to record that if I could get Digi to uh, join us? Because I think, and again, I may be thinking of someone else, he enjoys Apescape a lot. Absolutely. Nice. I hope you put this hard bro, 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 here is a power cell. Bro, bro, bro. Mm, yes, here's a power cell for you. Thanks, Uncle. Uncle, whatever your name is. What, Blood Uncle? We talking actual relatives there? Um, well, we'll get, we'll get to know more about Jack's family later on. Mm -hmm. Well, in later games specifically. So, uh, we're just gonna drop off the muse here, who is terrifying and strikes me as some sort of invisible. Oh, he's magic. He brought it out of nowhere. He's a magic artist. Well, well, you know, art is magic. Yeah, isn't it just? Okay, guys, we'll see you next time for more Jack and Daxter. Bye for now.